What's going on YouTube? This is What Would Josh Do? And I want to make a video comparing how iOS and Android are two completely different beasts, how multitasking around the two are different once you click a link and it opens a new web page and stuff like that. And I have four of my phones here because they are all completely different. I mean, completely different. You have a Samsung phone over here that usually has, you know, TouchWiz, and I didn't fair, think that that would be fair to show TouchWiz versus iOS when TouchWiz is skinned. It's Android with the skin on top of it. But we have removed that by installing Signage Mod 11. And I didn't want someone going, well, your Note 3 acts that way because you have a custom ROM on it. Well, I would reply to you saying, well, that's because I can. I can install a custom ROM on there. That is something completely different and something that I prefer. Okay. So what about our HTC phone? Well, if you go to HTC or your AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, Verizon, whatever, and you buy an HTC phone, it's going to have Sense on it. And Sense is Android with a skin on it. Now, I have purchased the Google Play Edition, which is this one right here. It looks completely different than Sense, but I didn't want somebody to go, well, you don't have what's on my HTC one, so that's not a fair comparison. So we're going to go ahead and leave that one outside of the question. And the two best things to compare is iOS 8 versus Android. Android in its naked self. <laughs> It's naked body. It's pure form. Let's go ahead and show you what I mean by that. This is Android in its pure form without any skin on top of it. And this phone is only $349 off contract. Off contract. If you go to Sprint and you get this on a two-year contract, you're going to spend anywhere from $0 to $50. So this is stock Android the way Android was meant to be. That to me is the best way to compare iOS versus Android. So let's begin. One thing that I like about the two is with AOSP Android, if you have a lock code on your phone, you've got to put in your little pattern to unlock it. And whatever your pattern may be, whether it be super difficult or very easy, it still takes a few seconds, especially when you unlock it, you put it back in your pocket, your notification goes off, you got to pull it out of your pocket, check it, put it back in your pocket, you get another notification, and it's just this never-ending cycle of putting in your lock screen code. Now, mine came up again, so I've got to go ahead and put it in. And then I've unlocked it once I put in my pattern. On iOS, all I got to do is simply press down on the home button, and then I long press on this button right here, and then bam because it has a fingerprint reader on it so it scans your thumbprint now granted yes the s5 does have the thumbprint scanner you swipe down and the note 4 will have that as well so i am excited about getting the note 4. that's how you unlock it one thing i want to go ahead and say is with ios you get this little pop-up that comes up on the screen and so if you're playing a game and there's a button on the top that you have to press and you get a notification it interrupts that you can't press that button until you swipe up on that notification or you wait for that notification to go away i am sure it's in the setting somewhere to disable that but being new to ios and this being my third day with this phone i don't quite know how to do it and so when you swipe down there's all your notifications i do like how it's all categorized meaning this is Gmail, and then it separates it to Twitter, and then it separates it to my YouTube capture app that I just installed and tried out, PlayStation message, and etc. I do like that. You just go ahead up here to this little minus button, and then you clear all for that, and then you do that. But what if you have a ton of notifications through a ton of apps? You know, I'm doing this all the time over here, where on here, if I have my PlayStation app sending me notifications, I just press this, and all my notifications are gone. One thing that I wanted to go ahead and cover was say you are in an app and you click on an ad by accident or you click on something that launches an external link. The best way I can show you is let's launch the default Twitter app and this isn't a comparison on which one launches it faster. Obviously this one just did but it is what it is. Okay let's compose a new tweet. On here you press what's happening. On here you press the little new tweet button. Okay what if I want to type something? I can include my pictures down here, right? I can include my pictures. Right here, I gotta click this little button to include my pictures. On here, you can do the same thing. Well, it hides them away. On here, it shows them like that. 
So let's go ahead and bring up the keyboard by typing on the screen. Now this one is SwiftKey, so just for fair comparison, we'll go ahead and change it over to the Google keyboard so people aren't thinking it's because I have a keyboard that enables features such as this. Let's type, hi, this is Josh on both of these keyboards. Okay, so I've typed in the same thing on both of these keyboards, and being someone that has exclusively used the iPhone for on my third day now, I have realized how annoying it is when I want to type in like a period or something, or a comma, or an exclamation point. On Android, you just press this little button for, for a period, you press this button for a comma. If you long press on it, you can choose the option you want, and I can quickly insert in a little exclamation point or something there. On here, you have to press this little button, you have to press this. One of the nice things is when you hit space, it switches over to that, so you can go ahead and continue typing in what you want to type. That is just one little pet peeve. Now with iOS, you can install SwiftKey, which is another video we're gonna do later on. SwiftKey is a keyboard that I've used for a long time now. I love it very much, and you're definitely gonna to wanna to try it out on your iPhone since you can finally install third-party keyboards now. Okay, so now I wanna go ahead and hide the keyboard. On here, you press return. Whoa, wait a minute. Um, how do I get this keyboard to go down? Is that, that's not, that's not possible. This keyboard's not gonna go down until I hit the X button, and now the bottom row is there. I can see where all's below that. I can hit cancel, but there's my keyboard again. On Android, you just press the little arrow, it hides your keyboard. Now, if you are on a Samsung device that does not have on-screen keyboards, just press the back button and it hides your keyboard. Now you have access to your full screen. I was on the YouTube Capture app, and to change the privacy, let's go ahead and just show you that. I'm gonna go ahead and use the YouTube Capture app real quick. I'm just gonna record something for a brief second, and then I'm gonna go to this little arrow here, and then click it again, and then, okay, so now I wanna upload this to my second channel. Uh, to change my privacy and stuff, Oh, on this one, it does give you the option to go ahead and press this little button to hide the keyboard. But as you can see, it is specific to just this app. If the app itself does not have a way to hide the keyboard, you're pretty much like, I mean, you can hit done and do it that way, but there's not like a global way of just simply hiding the keyboard to press something that's underneath the keyboard. Or some, you, know, you don't necessarily want to type something in at that time, you want to go ahead and go to the options that are underneath that keyboard, such as add an account, color correction, etc. So on Twitter, there was not a way to simply press a button and get your keyboard to disappear, but no matter what app you're on, if I'm on my Twitter app here, this is a third party one, if I wanna go ahead and hide my keyboard, I just simply press this little button and my keyboard's now hidden. Let's launch both the Twitter app on both of these phones and show you what happens when you click on a picture, for example. All right, we have the newest tweets loaded on both of these, and we're gonna find one that has a picture, the same picture on the, on the tweets. This is a really good one to show you right here. On iOS, you press on it, and then you press on it. I've experienced this, and with all apps, it is different on iOS. Now, <laughs> before you think I'm bashing iOS, I've been using this, trying very hard to accept the changes that are going from Android to iOS. So you've got the picture here and it's now full screen. I don't wanna press the home button to go home and then launch the Twitter app and find that tweet again. I just simply want to get rid of this picture. On Android, look, I'll press on the screen and then I can just press the back button. Now it did minimize it, but there's not a way to simply just go back. Another really good thing to show you is hill climb racing. Let's launch hill climb racing on both of these. Now I do have to install it on here, and that is one thing I really like about iOS on how easy it is to install an app, I will show you. Okay, so here's Hill Climb Racing. I can just go ahead and press on it, and then hit the install button. Now if it was the first time I installed it, it would pop up my little ID, and then I could just put my thumb down, and bam. I've put in my password, which is my thumb, and I've now purchased this app, whether it was free or paid. That is one thing I really like about iOS on how easy it is to go ahead and purchase an app. On Android, I've gotta put in my Google password, which is what I want because I don't want my daughter to play with my phone and buy me a bunch of rupees in an app or something, and then my phone bill's like 500 bucks, or there's this charge to my bank account for $99 because she was playing asphalt. A little thing popped up saying, do you want to buy this thing? She didn't know what to do. She pressed the button. Now my phone bill's charged. So I do like having a password, but having my thumb instead of a password is very nice. Let's go ahead and open this app. 
Now, I'm not going to click the ad because I don't want to somehow get them in trouble for false impressions or something like that. So, oh, look, I can't press the button up there because this is in the way. I could swipe that up to get rid of it. Yes, I could, but you know, it is what it is. So let's go to the settings icon here. Now on here, say I wanted to mute the music, but I accidentally hit this little shirt icon right here. It just launched a web page. Let's do the same thing on here. We'll click the shirt one. All right, now I'm in this app right here. And on here, there's, there's not a button to simply exit this and get back to the game. You've got to double press on this, and now you have Safari open, and then you can go back to the app you're on. That's fine. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. That's not a huge deal. But on here, I just press the back button, and it takes me right back to the game. I don't have to do that. And then there's another point I want to go ahead and get to, is multitasking on these are two completely different beasts. So let's go home on both of them. One thing I want to do is go ahead and launch play music on both of these phones. I'm going to play a song, but I'm going to go ahead and mute it so there's no content protection or any charges or anything like that. Once I go home, I have a little icon that shows me my play music, and I just swipe down, and I can pause it. I can go to the next track. I can press on this to go right to the song, or I can go ahead and exit out Google Play Music, period. On here, if I want to play a song... I'm playing it, I'm going full screen, I'm going home. Well, I went ahead and muted the song on here too, so you can't hear it. The song is still playing, you just can't hear it. Now, there's not a way to simply just drag down a notification to go to your Google Play app. You could launch the Google Play app or the Play Music app to change your music and stuff. Now, I do know about launch control. There is a way to slide up and you can go ahead and go forward and an additional option is back but I still like it where I can pull down my notifications and I can close out the app I can skip the track I can pause it I can click on that album picture to take me to Google Play and launch that app and I can do that on here too by pressing on the little text and showing me the picture so technically you're not missing out any functionality and in fact this one has a rewind button when this one doesn't when you're not in the app by simply going up on launch control and you can play pause rewind etc. I just wanted to show you how it's a completely different process between having it right there when you pull down your notifications to simply go to the next track, which then again, it doesn't take that long to simply do that on both of these phones. One thing I really don't like about iOS is Google apps such as Gmail. So we'll launch the Gmail app on both of these phones and you're going to see how the apps are way, way different. So Let's 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 just go to this one right here. This to this conversation. On iOS, it is just way different than on Android. And for some reason on this one it's actually actually fine. Let's go back. Okay, this is a really good one that I was trying to show you is on here it's all clean and on one screen. And right here, you've got like this ugly text that's going up and down and then it goes to the comment right there when it's just to me it looks a lot more appealing on there. And then like all the other Google apps just look so much better on Android versus iOS. Whether you use iOS or Android, I know you're gonna find yourself using a lot of Google apps, no matter which one you're a fan of. So as far as the back button, if you're playing a game and an ad pops up and you press on it and that, that launched a whole new app or a whole new link or web page or something like that, you've got to go to your recent apps, go back to that app. When on here, you just simply press the back button, which I definitely prefer. Let's launch this thing right here. And this is another one I want to show you. We launched the same comment on both of these, and I just think that looks ugly on here versus very nice and clean on here. And I can zoom in on the text, and I can go ahead and zoom in on the text here too. Now, I understand that Android is Google's baby, and they're going to spend way more time polishing their Android apps on Android versus iOS. I totally get that. See, I just went back to my home screen and on here, I've got to figure out where the app has the button at to go ahead and go back to the previous screen I was on and now I just go home. And on here, this is another thing I like about multitasking and this is gonna be the last part of the video. So if you're curious on how long this video is gonna be, this is the last part. 
So on here, you just double tap your button to get to your recent apps. On here, you press your recent apps button. You can see a middle one, and then you can see one on the left, which is your home, and then one on your right. Well, your home screen, you can't swipe that up and do anything with it. So you're only seeing two things right now. I can go ahead and go here and see three, and I can swipe each one of them away, or I can just simply press on it to go back to it. It's not too bad, and I'm, I like that they kind of took that from Android as far as the recent apps. I'm not bashing anybody for doing anything. If something works, go with it, use it. It's it's obviously works. So on here, you have three things and then a fourth thing. You don't see your home screen. I can go ahead and swipe each one away. I can long press on it to go to that app and uninstall it or clear the cache, etc. And there's all the apps I have installed. And there we go, I just close everything out. So I, I just think that multitasking on Android is a lot more convenient. You have a dedicated button to take you right to your recent apps versus double pressing and seeing two things versus seeing four things on here. By no means am I saying, you know, hey, this phone sucks because it's a solid phone. It's a very simple phone. It works and it's smooth. That's not to say Android isn't. I've been using Android since... 2009, back when my Samsung Moment had Android 1.5 on it. I couldn't install the Twitter app, so that's what made me Google Android 2.0. It said that I needed Android 2.0 or higher, so that's when I went ahead and found a, the forums, and I installed it myself before it came out, and now I had Android 2.1, while everybody else was still on 1.5 on their Moment. This video was simply to show you the biggest key differences between iOS and Android to me. I use a ton of Google apps, a ton of them, to check my emails and all my stuff. I absolutely love how polished the Google apps are on Android, but I really, really like the touch thing right here. It's so nice to be able to just unlock my phone without putting in my little code to unlock it. Again, the S5 does have that, and so does the Note 4. There might be another phone or two out there besides the S5 and the Note 4 that will have a thumbprint reader. But that's only two devices that I know of, of the hundreds of different Android devices out there on the market versus the iPhone 5, 5S, 5C, 6, 6 Plus, and all these that have the thumbprint scanner, and I absolutely love it. And then you get some people that are like, oh, you're giving your identity to Apple. Well, I did it on the S5. I'm going to do it on the Note 4 when I get that. I had to give the government my, my thumbprints when I joined the army years and years and years ago. I don't do anything illegal. I'm not worried about it. And it's not like you're instantly giving it to them anyway. There might be a way for Apple to take the scans that are built in and send it to them if requested, but they're not going to just do it for no reason. And same with the S5 and the Note 4. If they really, really want that information, if it's stored on the cloud and not just the device, then you're okay. And in fact, with Android L and with iOS 8, Apple and Android are both making it towards the stuff is encrypted on the device and there's no way for the to send that information to Apple. So if you need your device reset, your SOL, you're going to have to just do a factory reset. You can't ask them for a reset code on your phone. So that's a little bit of something that should go ahead and make you feel a little bit more comfortable with using your thumbprint. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this case off to get the thumbnail for this video. Wow, this device is very, very slippery. I just freaking dropped it. That was Android versus iOS, the most important things to me, the biggest key differences between these two devices. I cannot tell you that the iPhone is a terrible phone that you definitely should not get. It's definitely more about customization and now being able to install third-party keyboards, being able to have widgets, having NFC, having all the things new that that is in the new iPhone and iOS 8, it's definitely a more appealing device now than it was before. And they finally gave people an option to go ahead and go with the bigger phone for those of people that are have long fingers like me. And, you know, I know I can't reach to the very top very easily. No, it's not a huge deal. I don't have a hard time really doing that. I like big phones and I cannot lie. You other... <laughs> And if you're someone that says the iPhone 6 Plus is way too big for you, then go with the 6. Don't go with the Plus. I wanted the Plus because of the 1080p screen, the optic image stabilization when it comes to recording videos, and it being way, way less shaky with optic image stabilization versus the non-Plus that does not have the optic image stabilization. And, of course, the bigger battery and the bigger screen. 
And obviously, if Android, if you don't like TouchWiz, if you don't like Sins, Moto Blur, or LG's theme, or anything like that, you can install a custom ROM and make it the way you like it. You have a ton of choices, a ton of options. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a huge favor by giving it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. Please let me know which device you like more by leaving a comment below. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you want to stay up to date and see what videos are coming out next and etc. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're new here. This is What Would Josh Do? And I'm out.